Let's start with an advanced feature used by professionals to give the audio and video portions of a clip different in and out points. In this example, we're cutting from a quiet indoor setting to a noisy street. Instead of cutting at the same time as the video, the audio fades up a second or two before the video cuts. Here's how it works. First, double click the audio portion of any clip to expand audio and video. Now that audio and video have been expanded, a couple things will work differently. You'll be able to change the in and out points of the audio and video portions separately. One thing that does not change is that the video and audio portions of the clip are still considered one clip. You can move this clip around in the timeline and expect both parts to stay together. There's one more set of advanced audio skills that many producers need to know about, and that's how to work with clips recorded with more than one audio track. It comes up a lot. You'll record with the onboard mic on channel 2 and a separate external mic on channel 1. If you make no change, that onboard mic will be exclusively in the viewer's right ear and the external mic will be in their left ear. We'll make this change in the inspector. You can do this at any point in the editing process and with any number of clips. I can select one clip in the event browser to see it in the inspector or if I select a group of clips, the inspector will allow me to change them all at once. Click on the audio tab at the top. Look for an item called channel configuration. All you have to do is change the configuration from stereo to dual mono, and then both channels will be set to play in both ears. Now that you know how to separate audio channels, you should also know how to adjust the levels of those channels independently in the timeline. Right click on a clip that has already been configured to dual mono. Select Expand Audio Components. Now you can adjust levels, add keyframes, or even change the in and out points of either channel individually.